Hey guys, today I'm going to answer some questions about what slicer do I use? So this is a common question I get and we're going to talk about it inside. See you guys inside the video. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. As I said, I'm going to be talking about slicers. I get this question a lot, especially from people that are interested in getting in the hobby, considering the hobby, or just how do I do it? And um, kind of out on the road today and I thought this was a good question for a good video so I thought I'd take the time to kind of talk about it a little bit because um, if you're going to be 3d printing yay you bought the machine kudos but you've got to be able to take STL files and turn them into G code or whatever processing file format that your printer uses and the slicer is the tool that does that so and there's a myriad out of them out there if you're looking at FDM, if you're looking at SLA, it depends on what, you, what you're going to print is going to depend on what slicer you need. And now as the technology continues to grow, now we have some programs that do both, um, which is really kind of cool. So I thought it was a good time to kind of cover this topic, talk about it, and just basically tell you guys what I use. Because upcoming videos after this video, I'm going to do a video just on how I use uh, my FDM slicer, how I use my SLA slicer, because um, I haven't bought into one of the combo programs yet. I'm still using two independent programs for the two independent forms of printing, but I plan on going past that because there are other slicers out there that have tools in them that are just plain useful, and we want to make sure we talk about those as well. So that's kind of the topic of today's video. I'm going to show you the two main ones I use, but also list off a few others that if you're just getting into the hobby, you may want to take a look at. So definitely some good ones. I will have links to all of them down in the description down below. Some are free, some are pay for. So kind of keep that as mine as you're looking. Some of the ones that are pay for offer free versions as well. You just don't get all the bells and whistles. So keep that in mind as you look at the software and what we're going to do to utilize these platform software. So before I dig in and I start talking about these softwares, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you guys enjoy this content, want to see more of this 3D printing, how do I do it videos, definitely hit that thumbs up button. And, you know, for fun, if you're already 3D printing, put down below in the comments what slicer you're using, because I'd like to know. And definitely, again, please consider joining the membership. The funds from that membership go to aiding and building this channel and getting the cool things that we showcase on the channel. So definitely your assistance has helped and there's a few perks to joining. So thank you guys. Now let's hop into talking about those slicers. All right, so the first slicer I'm gonna talk about that I use actually pretty wholeheartedly now for my FDM printing is the Bamboo Lab Slicer. Um, this guy has been a really good slicer for me. It works really, really well. It has a lot of cool features like the online models, maker lab, maker supply, but also it just comes with a ton of pre settings that work really, really well in the environment. Um, you can choose non bamboo lab printers, which you guys can see I've got my K1 Max, my Neptune 3 Max, and my CR10 V2s all in here as well. And the presets are really nice if you're using bamboo filament. So kind of keep that in mind. It works really well. Um, you can tell it what filaments you got going on, whether it's PLA basic. And you can choose generic PVA, ABS, PLAs, or which honestly, what I've been using a lot of is the bamboo filament. And their presets, I'll be honest, guys, they're mwah, they're almost right on, especially for their machines. But also for the Creality machines and for the Illigo machines, they've been pretty spot on and worked really well for me. So the filament has been uh, spot on for what they're doing. The software itself is relatively intuitive. It has really good repair tools that have worked really well for me. And it also catches a lot of errors that you sometimes miss. But you also have global and object processing. And you can open up the advanced console and get your items like strength, speed, support, and uh, other items like your infill and stuff like that to help you work through the videos and also just work through your projects without creating a problem as you print. So definitely kind of one of the things that works for, you've got your, your needle diameters, what flow you want, but also just tools within the models that let you work really well, as well as monitoring your printers 
from the software remotely. So you can network send to your Bamboo Lab machines without even having to leave the program and start your print and monitor from all in one place. Also, the Bamboo app is fantastic. Let's me monitors, lets me know my printer, hey, it ran out of filament or whatever else is wrong with it to go back and check up on it. So for my FDM printing, um, I used to be a hardcore Cura guy, but now I'm using the Bamboo Lab slicer almost singular. Um, I haven't really touched any of the other ones in quite a while. Now Cura, this is free software. Cura, great slicer, used it for a long time because Honestly, for a while there, it was that was what there was. But this one has just kind of won the game for me. It's been a really good slicer. It worked really, really well. It just allows me to do what I need to do and control what I need to control. So this has kind of been the pick of the litter for my FDM printing. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with Prusa Slicer. There's nothing wrong with Simplified 3D. This has just become my preference. Um, there's a lot of good tools, a lot of different things like that. It has a really good repair tool for model simplification and different things like that, but also just the tool itself works really well for identifying issues as you print. So if you guys want to further in detail on the Bamboo Lab Slicer, definitely hit me down in the comments down below, and we'll definitely consider that video because um, I do want to talk more about slicers and what we do with them. So that's my FDM primary program. Let's kick over and talk about what I'm using to handle resin printing. All right, guys, so let's move on to SLA printing. What is the second thing that I use? So SLA printing, I'm still using an independent program. My primary program is Shintu Box Pro. I do use the Pro version. Shintu Box is available as a free software, but I am utilizing the Pro version. I find a lot of benefits to using it. As you guys can see here in front of it, I've got my Illigoo printers logged into it and set up. Um, it's definitely a program that I enjoy. Um, again, it's free from Shintubox.com. Great little software, but there's a lot of good features here. Um, printer support. Oh my goodness, there's so many printers available and actually I need to add a printer because I don't have my frozen printer logged in here. I just noticed that. So we'll add my my uh, 8KS. Wow, real simple to add a printer. Boom, I've got my frozen Sonic 8KS in there. Now granted, I just have the default profiles. I need to add my profiles and if you guys are curious to see how to import print profiles from resin manufacturers, definitely leave it down in the comments down below. But this is my primary program that I use for slicing. The pro version gives you a lot of cool tools. For example, it gives me cavity detector and also network send for my for most of my Illigoo machines, my Saturn IV and Saturn v Mars V Ultra. I can sit here and network via the network, start a print on a machine if it's already out in the, in the shop prepped and ready. I don't have to go out there and hit go. So, um, I personally enjoy the layout of the program. It's a step-by-step -step process to getting my slide, getting my file positioned, supported, and prepped for printing. And it's laid out nice and clean. You've got good repair tools. Now it's throwing a fix. I don't have a model loaded. We'll do that another time if you guys are interested in going through my entire process of how I prep a print. Um, so if you're curious about that, leave it as a comment down below so I know your guys' interest in having that kind of a video. So this is where I do a lot of my work. Now there are competing programs out there like Lychee and, and other software applications. Shintu Box is where I started. It's where I've been for a long time. Uh, the Shintu Box Pro license, I believe, runs $160 or $180 a year, or you can pay monthly as well. Um, I pay the yearly. I find it just to be cheaper. Want it done once a year, I've got all my tools. Um, kind of a great program, works really well for me, and it just allows me to print um, and set up my prints, save my configurations. I can save over here all my resin configurations. I don't know if I have, I haven't imported one yet. Um, I need to import my one for the Serotech resin that I'm using that I am quite enjoying right now. Um, you can do bowling operations where you're cutting, hollowing out, dig holes in the model to allow you to um, 
uh, prevent suction. You can split models up, auto orientation, a lot of good orientation tools available, even measurement tools. Um, I use the point, two point distance quite a bit to look at the size of a figure or a model uh, to make sure I'm printing parts appropriate sizes. So a lot of great tools, a really good package. Again, you don't have to use the paid version. Um, you get pretty much getting printers into the program. You get all of that in the lower, in the free version. Um, use, you don't have some of the bells and whistles, you know, and it, it is what it is. The repair tool is fairly decent. Um, I've actually found the bamboo lab tool to be better. Um, so sometimes I'll load it in there and re-export the STL after I've done it, bring it back over here and finish cleaning up. Um, but all in all, this has kind of been my go-to tool um, when it comes to my SLA prints. It's handy, it works well, it has a ton of printer support and new printers added all the time. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it pop up there where it said we just had an update to it. Um, but just the printer support alone is great. Um, I actually need to add my Galaxy One as well. And a couple, I've got a couple more frozen printers I need to add, but yeah, so really good piece of software. It's worked really well for me as I've gone through the process. The network tool, you do have to download and install that. It's only for a certain number of printers right now. Um, I imagine that support will grow as newer printers are released with the network components, but I've really enjoyed it, being able to sit there and go, oh, I know my printer's got resin in it. I know the bed's clean and level, go. Um, so really a nice tool and a lot of nice features to have in here to work with. So um, hopefully this has answered your guys' questions of what tools I'm using to take the SDL and get it to a print. Now, if you're curious about what tools I'm using for 3D model creation, definitely leave the comments down below because um, I'm gonna start talking about that a lot more. But also, these are the slicers that I choose to use to get my prints. Are these the correct ones for you? Possibly not. Um, there's a lot of options out there, like for FDM, like I said, there's Prusa Slicer, there's Cura, there's Simplified 3D, that's a paid for. But also, Lynchy is available for FDM printing. Shindabox doesn't do both, it only does one. Lynchy is kind of the one, or Leechy, or however it's pronounced, is the only one that I actually know of that has dual support in one paid for license. Um, which is also, I believe, a yearly license. So if you guys have interest in that, you know, make sure you're helping out and supporting the channel. And we can take a look at um, purchasing that license and bringing the software onto the channel as well. But again, what slicers are you guys using? What slicers are you curious about? Um, definitely leave it down in the comments down below if you're new here. Make sure you're subbed. Hopefully you found this information interesting or at least whet your appetite for more. So definitely and hit that thumbs up button it helps us out greatly so appreciate you guys' time today this is just kind of a brief cap of what i'm using hopefully you found it useful and we will catch you in the next video